Hello there, it's Mr K here, the Mediocre Painter, and I've been painting miniatures for some 30 odd years, and I'm doing YouTube videos to try and help the beginner get into the wargaming hobby, because I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So today I'm going to be talking about basing your minis, in terms of base coating your minis, not actually doing the base. And this is part of a series of videos I'm doing to explain the painting process, and um, you want to see what the last step was, that was priming, that's somebody somewhere up here. So we're following a four step process to actually paint our minis and basically step one is prime, step two is base coating, step three is wash and then step four is the details. And this is lifted from a process in the first strike box set from Games Workshop about painting your death guard and it's actually a pretty sound process, they do know what they're talking about occasionally. And it's something that I've actually followed for years in terms of like painting uh, miniatures in a batch fashion. The best way to improve, you know, when you're first starting is to I basically paint in a batch fashion, repeating the same thing over and over again. So painting minis with the same colour scheme over and over will improve your skills much faster than any other way of painting. You know, look at sport for example, the likes of Michael Jordan didn't just miraculously get good at shooting baskets. He went into a gym and he shot thousands and thousands of jump shots, he jumped up and down thousands and thousands of times. You know. This is the reason why he was so good. He had you know, an obsession about what he was actually doing and improving. And it's the same thing here. You want to get better at uh, miniature painting, then you're going to need to paint a fair number of miniatures. But if you want to get better fast, then a really good way to do it is this batch method that I've been talking about. And you can see my other video about where it explains that process in a bit more detail here. So today we're going to talk about base coating. So in order to base coat, we're going to need to lay out in front of us the colours that we want to use to do our base coats with, which we selected before. And in this particular case, we're going to be painting a series of orcs. And I suggested you know, going out on eBay and finding yourself a squad of 10. Um, doesn't matter what squad of 10, but I selected orcs simply because I like painting orcs. And they're a little bit easier to paint because they're nice and big and hefty, got big heads and all that kind of stuff. So lay out the colours in front of you so you're clear about what you're doing and you're going to be painting from light to dark. So you're going to start with the lightest colour and then move forwards. So in this case on our orcs we've got some little detail parts that are like skull motifs. We're going to paint in a bone or a flesh. We'll then move on to the leather which is um, a brown uh, or actually you can debate whether the brown is a darker or lighter colour than the green which is the skin. And then finish with the silver for the guns and the swords and the like. Generally speaking, that's the process you follow. Occasionally there are a little, some exceptions. So in some of the details, like on this guy, where he has like fur on his head, you're going to go, ah, oh, yeah, probably want to do that in a red. Well, you probably want to do that before you paint around it in the silver. So there are some cases where you just have to um, do things in a slightly different order or a slightly different way. Again, we talk about this gunner here. He's got yellow hair, but because it's an extremity, and it's at the end of the model, I'm like, uh, I'll do that at the end. So you, you do make some exceptions to those sorts of rules when you're doing it, but generally speaking, you go light to dark. So first things first, you're going to need a brush. Triple zero is really good for actually base coating, it's perfect sort of size. You're going to need yourself some clean water. This isn't clean because this is like the third take I've done on this. So, um, but you want clean water, okay? And... Um, you're then going to need your wet palette, which is here. Now there's lots of good videos out there about making up a wet palette. This one is basically made from a, a sweetie box with a lid. You can use a piece of Tupperware. And I've actually got actually proper paint palette cartridge paper uh, in here. But actually you can use um, qu good quality paper towel at the bottom and then like a baking sheet over the top and that will give you a very decent wet palette. And it'll keep the paint wet for a long, long time. Um, days in fact so it's a really good way of actually saving your paint and, um, and keeping it nice and smooth and consistent to the consistency that you actually want. So when it comes to actually painting first things first take your paint pot and give it a good old shake for 20 or 30 seconds so it mixes properly that way you'll get the colour as you want it to actually be. Once you've done that take some paint on your brush Put it on your wet palette. Mm. 
and with some water. It's very important here to thin your paints. In fact, there's a mantra really when it comes to painting, there's sort of three rules, thin your paints, thin your paints, and my third rule is clean water. Change your water often. So once you've got a nice consistency and you've, you've mixed it all together, you want to check that it flows well. Now, on this particular case, I've probably gone a bit too far on my brush there, and I've got a little bit coming onto the actual brush itself, so I should probably just clear that brush out, dry it off on my paper towel, and get the brush, get the paint back on my brush again. And I'm just wanting to check that, you know, it's nice and smooth and it's nice and consistent. I'm going to take my thumb, I'm just going to paint along my thumb, and just see that it's nice and smooth and nice and consistent along the length of my thumb. And it's like, oh, that looks pretty good. The coverage is good. Now, what I mean by coverage is the opacity is quite good. You know, I've not thinned it down too much. Uh, I've not thinned it down so it's like the consistency of milk. Now, if you watch paint videos by the masters, like a Sam Lenz or whatever, he'll talk about the rule of threes, where you should actually be using three coats to paint your miniatures for every single color. And that means kind of like you're almost doing like a glaze when you're actually uh, doing that painting. If you've got the kind of patience to do that, then great, good on you. But when you're a beginner, it's like, uh, you know, do you really want to have to do three coats? So really you want to try and get a consistency um, here that means you're probably going to need to do two with the light colors and maybe you can get away with a single coat with the darker colors. So when we actually come to do the painting um, of the miniature, you want to mount it onto a pilt bottle. And the reason for this is you can, so you can get a nice grip in your off hand. And you want to try and keep that hand, you know, anchored to your body. Don't have it out like this. You want to keep it anchored to your body because you want to minimize the number of movements it can make. And then when you actually use your paintbrush hand, it's just push, put, put your paintbrush hand on the pill bottle like that with the brush so that you get extra support to actually paint where you want to go. That way you're nice and steady and slow. So keep your elbows tucked in, you're nice and steady and you're putting the paint where you want to and the brush isn't like waving around. Because if you try and do it like this, you're not going to get the paint in the right place. And ultimately that's what you're trying to do. Now, when you're first beginning, you are going to make mistakes. So don't worry too much. It's like, oh man, I didn't quite get that paint on that skull motif there. Well, don't worry too much about it. You can try and correct it sometimes with a little, you know, with a little, like I've just done there, with basically a little bit of water and a little suck up, and then just basically try and pick off the excess paint. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But generally speaking, if you're following a method of a light to do a dark approach, I've just painted that light there. I'm not that fussed that, you know, I didn't quite, uh, that I've got paint around that skull motif on his uh, belt because I'm going to be painting brown around it and brown will go over the flesh just fine. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to basically get more accurate as you go along. So you'll move on and you'll do the brown or the green next and basically just try and get it in the right place. Don't get too worried if it's not in the right place. This is acrylic paint. You just come back and correct it. So what you want to do is you'll go through your 10 miniatures and you'll do all of the skull motifs and the bits that are skull, uh, that skull color. And then you will then clean your brush and change your water before you move on to the next color. It's also a good idea when you move from miniature to miniature to clean your brush and dry it out, pick up the paint for the next mini. The reason I say that is, this isn't so true here with when I'm talking about painting the skull motifs because it's such a small area. But in the case of like um, the flesh, where you're actually trying to be a bit precise, especially around the face, in terms of not getting it on the teeth and things like that, you do need to be taking your time. So you may spend a good 10 minutes or so doing that on a given miniature. And no matter what, I guarantee you, there's some parts of the paint there somewhere on that brush that's drying out a bit. So it's a good idea to avoid that and go, right, okay, I've done the green on that mini, clean my brush, and move on to the next one. 
And it's a good idea to get in that kind of habit. And as I said before, between colours, change your water. Because you want the colour that you got in that pot to be the colour that's on the mini. And this is really important. And it's more important when you come to doing washes um, than it is when you're actually coming to do paints. Washes is very important because you don't want them to go milky. But it's important also when you're doing paints. I know a lot of people will say, ah, oh, you don't need to do that. But in this base coating phase, it's a really good idea to do that. So what you'll do is you'll go through, do those different colours, and you'll end up with a mini that looks something like this guy, where basically you've managed to base coat him all the way around. And you've basically got the paint in all the right places. Well, you're going to just check that you did. So you're going to inspect, just make sure, yeah, did I get all the paint in the right places? Or didn't I? Now, when I used to judge miniatures, painting competitions, often you'd have several hundred to actually judge. What I would always look at immediately at every single miniature was the difficult to reach spots. So in this case on the orc, it's like underneath the neck and you know, behind the head, behind the ears, that kind of thing. And actually I can look here and go, oh, actually I have actually missed a bit behind the ears. I'm going to need to correct that. So those are the sorts of places that you really need to look when you're looking at these sorts of things because you want to try and be thorough and accurate, take pride in your work and that kind of thing. So you will have found almost certainly that you've made some mistakes there. Don't worry about it. Just look at it and go, okay, made a mistake there. I'm going to need a little bit of brown to tidy that up. Move on to the next mini. Just check that one out. Check that one out and then have an idea of what you need to do and then basically go back and do the same thing over again. So take that brown and Correct it on those miniatures that need some brown correction. Correct it on the miniatures that need some green and so on. Remembering to change your water between the different colours when you do it. And then eventually you'll end up with something that's neat and tidy like that. And that is your goal. Your goal at this moment in time is to have a nice, neat and tidy painted base miniature. With all the base colours in all the right places. And in the case of something like the teeth, for example, you may well have decided to you know, overpaint those with white to like bring them back out again. You don't really need to do that yet. You can worry about that at a later date. But things like the details, like earrings or something and things like that, that's probably a good idea to pick those out at this moment in time as well because the wash phase will really pick out those little details when you do it. So that's basically how you do your base coating. It's, it's not the science of rockets, just take your time, remember to thin your paints, remember to thin your paints, remember to change your water frequently and often, remember to clean your brush frequently and often as well, and you'll be just fine. Take your time, enjoy it, and remember it's acrylic paint. You make a mistake, you can go back and correct it, it is not that big a deal. So hopefully you found that useful. If you do, please like, subscribe. I will be doing more. My next episode, I'll talk to you about the wash phase. Thanks very much for your time. Goodbye.